Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. I'm Thomas Miller with our teacher and astrologer, Robert Glasscock, who has been studying this craft for 57 years. You know, when you've accumulated that much knowledge and the way that Robert has studied astrology, he never ceases to surprise you with these techniques that you just don't hear about anywhere else. And we're going to talk about one of those techniques now, which came up in a recent webinar that I was on with him. And I was like, oh, oh, we got to do that in a podcast. That's amazing. I think you call it developmental arc. Developmental arc. Very simple. All you do is make a list of your planets in their degree order. So the, and, and you include your midheaven and include your ascendant and include your part of fortune, if you use that. And when you do this, Thomas, you have, um, starting with the early, the planet in the earliest degree, that is the first archetype in your chart. Whatever that planet is, is the first archetype that will, quote unquote, be initiated, so to speak, in, in your life from birth all the way through the rest of the planets and points in their order. And when you stop and think about it, it makes great sense. All of these planetary archetypes mean something. And in the order of their degree tells you their sequence of development in your life. And it's not only how you start life and how you end it, but everything in between. Think about the transit here, here, for example, I have my moon at three degrees Aries and Neptune is at four degrees Libra and Venus is at four degrees Scorpio. So that is the moon, Neptune, Venus archetypes that are basically all in the same degrees, different signs. Well, let's say Mars as a planet begins to transit Aries, which it just did 10 days or so, whatever ago. The first planet in my chart that any any planet by transit, the sun, the moon, Mars, any planet entering a sign will first aspect my moon, Neptune, and Venus. And then it will go on to aspect my sun next, and then Pluto, and then it'll aspect my ascendant, and then it will aspect my Saturn and Uranus and so on. The last thing it will do is aspect my midheaven at 2840 Libra. Now, think about it. During your first month of life, the moon will transit all of those points in that order. And the second month of your life, it will repeat the same transits over those planetary archetypes in that order. Every year of your life, starting with the first year of life, the sun will transit the conjunction with every one of these planetary archetypes in this order that was established at your birth. So every year of your life, you repeat this same developmental arc, the same developmental sequence over and over and over again. So in my life, the moon, Neptune, and Venus, because they are in basically the same degree, Every time anything transits over any of them, it's also triggering the other two. So my moon, Neptune, Venus archetypes are forever linked in my life. Now, so the moon in Aries, this is how I start everything. These, the, this pattern, this, this sequence becomes, re, it's almost like DNA. Because the first and every month of your life, the moon transits over it. Every year of your life, the sun transits. So you begin to learn, aha, in this season of the year, my son is doing this. And so it becomes a built-in sequence that you are aware of unconsciously, but you can make it conscious through setting up your own list of the, of the planets and points in their developmental order. So I start everything out with the moon in Aries. I am unbelievably interested and enthusiastic about any anything, whether it's astrology or a new love affair, uh, anything. I start out with that kind of enthusiasm, naive, naivete perhaps with Aries, uh, but I'm excited and, and upbeat about it. And at the same time, I'm, Neptunian and Venusian about it. 
So from day one, I was drawn, and I mean the earliest memory I have, uh, is wanting to be in the theater. I was five years old, and uh, we were living up in Maine one summer while my dad attended uh, a college up there, his final course to be an ophthalmologist. We lived on campus, and there was a... one of these traveling caravan theaters on wheels, a little small stage, and it was a touring troupe of actors. And a friend of mine, another five-year-old, we found it one day. It was kind of off campus, and it was not in the woods, really, but it was certainly not a big city. It was in Portland, Maine. And I was fascinated with this thing, this stage on wheels with curtains and painted backdrops. So I knew from, and then my dad had been a musician. So I started studying piano at six and started studying art at six, five actually. But at six, I was absolutely studying with with an art teacher. So Moon, she was a woman, Moon, Neptune, Venus, very early in my life. My dad and mother, my dad, when I was born, was going down on a ship in the English Channel. And I didn't meet him for six months or so. And look at my birth configuration. The moon, Neptune, and Venus, all female planets. And there was some mystery thrown in there because of Neptune. And, well, the mystery was that my dad, I didn't know, was and he was seriously injured in this war obviously he survived and was fine but he was away and then suddenly came into my life and i'm sure as an infant i'm thinking who is this who needs him (laughs) i'm perfectly happy with my mother then at age three uh two and a half my sister was born that's my moon degree and so on so then you go through this list of archetypes and you realize well here's where I hit the ascendant, or here's where I hit Saturn. And the last thing, the last degree in my chart, there are two, the the planet Mercury, which is at 24 in Virgo. And really everything in my life, Thomas, has come down to, is it true or is it a lie? Very simple. Are they telling me the truth or are they lying to me? And believe me, with Neptune conjunct my moon and neptune and venus at birth uh and coming from an alcoholic family that's what it's all about is trying to distinguish the lies from the truth so i've got mercury right there at the end so i am skeptical about everything mercury and virgo show me show me i hear what you're saying but show me prove it And the final thing, the final point is my midheaven at 28 Libra. And ever since I was a child, all I've cared about is a career. I started working young. I was a a paid magician at 10. Paid. And that was on stage. So I loved it. Loved doing magic. That's also Neptune. So I, I, I got my social security card when I was 12 to work. So I love to work and I love my career. And ultimately, everything in my life comes down to, is this going to further my life, my career? Because I love to work for myself, always have, or not. And that's my midheaven point. So that's how you use this developmental arc, if you will. Very simple technique, but oh boy, do you learn a ton about how you start things, how you develop them, where you're going to run into problems, and how you conclude them. How do you work with those earlier degrees? So you said your moon is at three degrees. I'm just looking at your chart here. You've got Neptune at four. You've got Venus at four. So you have several that are earlier because look i'm getting if you have um second decanate or third decanate so in other words planets say greater than 10 degrees uh, those tend to spread out in your life so something might happen at age 10 age 20 age 30 that gives you a little time to let that soak but when you have something like the moon sitting at three degrees every three years you get a lunar pattern in your life that's pretty pretty quick True, 
but it's true. That's what's important about these these early planets, because uh, using the planetary degrees, you know, this book that I've written on that and talk, we've talked about it a bit. The degrees equal years, ages at which that archetype will be predominant in your life. My moon is at three. It's the earliest degree. And I, as I think I've told you, I moved around a lot. Uh, in my early life. So I was used to, I liked move. I still do. Now in the last, let's say, before I moved into this place, I had been living where I lived for 20 years. So that's changed. But early in my life, that was my expectation is that no, nothing is permanent. And Thomas, to this day, I have never felt permanent anywhere. Anywhere. Condos, I buy the condo. To me, it's like living in a nice hotel suite. So I can look at the mortgage and think, well, if if I were living in a nice hotel, it would be this much a night. So I could justify the mortgage that way. But it's never, nowhere has ever felt permanent to me. But that's the moon in Aries anyway. I'm very aware that that not only where I live, but life itself is temporary. And yet this moon in Aries is eternally optimistic. Thank God for it. Because if you're going to be self-employed, it's a great position. Uh, and going into theater and acting is nothing but rejection. So you have to learn how to handle that. But you're always, always optimistic. It never has occurred to me that I would fail. And believe me, I have. But I know to other people, it looks I've had people tell me, you get everything you want. And that's not true. But it looks that way to them. Uh, so I, I'm just, that moon in Aries is kind of a lifesaver for me. And of course, Aries women have played a strong role in my life too starting with Linda Goodman, in fact, in Aries. So I find this, use, this incredibly useful because you can look at a glance, if you know where transiting Saturn is, in what, 25, 26 Capricorn right now, well, that's trining my Mercury, you see. And Mercury's in my ninth house, which does rule broadcasting and writing and so on. And among other things, look what you and I are doing, thanks to you who have invited me to do these things. That's my Mercury degree. Well, you should be doing them. <laughs> figured Thanks, nobody else stepped up so why not that's true all right so let me ask you this those oversaturation of a pattern and i always like to look at at the positive how can we turn this into a positive so every year two or three you're just getting hammered with the characteristics of the sign house and the planet's position so how do you turn that into a conscious positive thing Great question. For example, the moon in Aries just taken alone at birth. I have it at three degrees, but the moon in Aries bores easily. It's very bright as a rule. Uh, that may or may not indicate a lot of education. There are plenty of people to, with, with that who don't get. Uh, I got all the education I thought I needed, but I bore easily. And astrology is the only subject in my entire life that I have never been bored with. And I don't see how anybody could be. You never can learn at all. Every chart you read is different. Every context is different. So it's endlessly fascinating to me. At the same time, it's endlessly expansive because it makes me think about things that I would never have thought about otherwise, especially on this collective land. The, the idea that we as individuals are somehow, some way connected with these planetary cycles in our solar system is sort of staggering, really. But it's true. You can't predict the death of a total stranger 2,000 miles away in three and a half days if there weren't some connection between the planets in the solar system and people's lives. And that's what this shows you over and over and over again. But yeah, so so my moon in Aries, every three years, I am looking for something new and start something new as a, a result of that. It is absolutely fascinating what's inside this chart. Wow, what a great technique. Thank you for sharing it with us. Well, thank you. I love to do it. It's a simple technique, but it's incredibly revealing. I think the more you use it and think about it. Let me mention, that's not the last one he knows. <laughs> 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 hey, we've talked about this book. You've written some little pamphlets that are available yes. on Amazon. This one is called Notes on Essentials of Astrology, Using Degrees, A Lifetime at a Glance. And that's available along with three others on Amazon. These are quick little Kindle books if you'd like to check those out from Robert. 
He's working on a big one that we're going to do as an audiobook too. So that's coming, but that'll be later in the year. And if you'd like to check in with Robert for a reading, we've put the information on that in the show notes. You can click on that link and it'll take you straight into communication with him. Thank you, Robert, for this technique. Really appreciate it. And you are welcome. And thank you. Appreciate this. We'll see you on the next Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock. Thanks for listening.